Kia team, welcome back to the Black Jersey, I'm Max and I'm the channel's host. A big thank you to my Patreons who are supporting me all the time, and a big thank you to all the subscribers who are returning for this video. Today's topic is going to be a prediction of which team has the best odds of winning the 2022 Six Nations. Just for context, this is how everybody placed in 2021 when everything was 100% crowdless. So yeah, um, let's uh, just hop into things now that I've thanked my Patreons, done all that kind of stuff, reminded you to check that out and um, go to PayPal and all that. We're going to start off with Italy. Kieran Crowley, the former All Black and Taranaki stalwart, is their new head coach. And the All Blacks had a very disappointing outing against Italy um, last year. It was not flash, a lot of knock-ons, and Italy, despite being a very young team, was reading the game very well. They are ranked 14th in the world right now, so I'm not really going to cover them properly, the Six Nations, until they do actually start playing like a Tier 1 nation at last. The key player to me, I think, is going to be Michele Lamaro, who is their captain. He's only played 10 tests, but looks to be very promising. He has very good tackle technique, and what Kieran Crowley's really doing is he's like, right, I can't rely on the current lot. I'm going to turn to the next generation and see how things go. So yeah, a lot of up-and-coming players is the biggest strength for Italy. You've got the likes of Paolo Garbisi coming in at 10. So there is potential for this Italian team to finally start playing like a Tier 1 nation. Um, the key weakness, though, to me is a lack of experience. None of their players in the current squad have reached 50 tests, and Luca Morisi and Marco Fusa are the only players in Italy right now who are aged 30 or over. So yes, it is a really new look team for Italy. I can't see them doing much better than 6th place. Now we're going to Wales who are ranked 8th in the world right now. Um, look, I do think that Wales um, have had some good games in the last 10 years or so, but to be totally honest... Um, I think they were only so successful there because of Warren Gatland. Um, Wayne Pivak is not on the same coaching level as Gatland was. And um, yeah, I'm not suspecting Wales are going to go too well. I think they're going to come fifth. Um, the key player is Adam Beard. I named him as my reserve lock for my World 15 of 2021. The guy is going to be um, having a lot of... Uh, he's going to have a lot of responsibility on his shoulders, that boy. Um, Alan Wynne-Jones, yes, out for the Six Nations, potentially with that shoulder injury. So Adam Beard is finally going to step up to the plate as the best lock and expect them to play the full 80 of almost every game. His tackling will be on show and his carrying will be on show as well. Key strength is the outside backs. Josh Adams is absolutely brilliant. Alex Cuthbert has got a recall as well. At six foot six, he's a very imposing winger, so it can put other players into two minds about how to tackle him. Um, Louis Rees Zammett obviously has pace to burn. Johnny McNichol is still quite fast for an aging player, whereas Liam Williams is the best player under the high ball in world rugby. So the outside back's definitely the biggest strength for Wales. Their key weaknesses, though, um, 16 players from the Gatland era who are prominent in that time remain. This is like uh, Dylan Lewis, Ross Moriarty, Dan Bigger, Jonathan Davis, Gareth Davis. Um, there's just too many... Um, players who have been in that Wales setup for a very, very long time. The setup hasn't changed absolutely dramatically in terms of who the actual first choice lineup is, although um, PVAC has capped quite a few new guys. It, it's just that first choice lineup is not changing all that much. So yeah, Wales for fifth place. Fourth place, I think, is going to go to Scotland, who are ranked seventh in the world right now. Duhan van der Merwe, who I think is one of the top 10 players in world rugby right now, as I said in this video here in my World 15 video, is an absolute danger for opposition defences. He beat 50 defenders in 2021, and so expect him to be beating defenders rather for days um, in the 2022 edition of the Six Nations if he stops 
um, getting injured, stuff like that. He's just got so much pace, so much power, so much agility, even though he's six foot four. Terrifying player to defend against. Um, yeah, the key strength for Scotland, um, I think as well, they're finally looking like somewhat like a Scottish team. Um, Scotland does pick players from elsewhere in the UK, things like that. Only nine of the current 39, though, were born outside of the UK. So, yeah, somewhat it is a Scottish team for once. Too many of the over 25 players, though, for me, um, don't have enough experience to complement their age. For example, Nick Haining at 31 years old, only 10 test caps. Not a lot for a very experienced player. Um, Pierre Schumann, who was born in South Africa, 27 years old, uncapped. Like, ideally, with this much experience in the squad, Scotland should have way more 50 test veterans. I'm, I'm just not sure what's going on with their lack of experience, to be honest. Third place, I think, is going to go to England's to match their world ranking of third place. Um, their key player, in my opinion, is going to be Ben Youngs. In this tournament, he's probably going to overtake Jason Leonard as the most kept English player of all time if he can avoid injury. Owen Farrell, out for the tournament, so... Ben Youngs is really going to have to really just dish out the game plan to the other backline players and just hope that um, things can go smoothly without their captain, Owen Farrell. His leadership is really going to be tested as well with Courtney Laws still recovering from a concussion. Um, I think that if Tom Curry gets named captain, he'll be looking to Ben Youngs for a lot of support. Um, for first five, that's the key strength for me. Marcus Smith is so brilliant. I think he will have another stunning year of Test Rugby, even though he will play away for the first time in his career. Um, George Ford, I think, will be good off the bench as a mentor for Smith while Farrell is injured. Um, Orlando Bailey as well can play at fullback. So yeah, Orlando Bailey could perhaps be the man to be a third choice first five at the World Cup who can play in other positions against tier two nations for England. He looks very exciting to me, but Marcus Smith will obviously be the talk of the town in downtown Manchester. The key weakness though, traveling with Henry Slade. I'm not going to reveal my opinion on this here, but long story short, um, Slade has this particular medical decision he's made. And centre is a vulnerable position for England. Mark Atkinson is in his 30s, but he's only played one test. So Henry Slade, long story short, is going to be heavily relied on by England. Manu Tuolangi's out, Farrell's out, Atkinson's inexperienced for an old boy. So if France don't let Henry Slade in through the borders and stuff, um, France are going to absolutely destroy England. Henry Slade, as I said, he'll be heavily relied on, so fingers crossed his personal decisions don't impact the team. Right, guys, now for the top two. Um, both of these guys played against the All Blacks last year and got very convincing wins. I do think second will be Ireland and first France. I'll deep dive into Ireland first, though. Um, their world ranking right now is fourth. I thought they were going to absolutely just fall off with Andy Farrell as the head coach. He was selecting a very similar team to Joe Schmidt, but they're still succeeding somehow. Their key player is going to be Ronan Kelleher. He's improved out of sight in the last 12 months, and I think he could actually be in the runnings for top try scorer of the Six Nations, despite the fact he's a hooker. Ireland really do love their driving mauls. Um, the key strength is, of course, their front row as well. Kean Healy is still ongoing. Andrew Porter and Todd Furlong. Please don't ever play the two of them against the All Blacks at the same time ever again. What a formidable front row. Um, hookers are looking very good as well with Kelleher leading that front row for Ireland right now. Um, the key weakness, though, mate. There, there just seems to be a bit too much experience. Uh, Johnny Sexton is still the captain, and if he makes it to 2023's World Cup, he is going to be the nation's oldest ever player at, yes, 38 years old. Um, eight players in the Irish squad have 50 or more tests, and uh, 11 of the 37 players are in their 30s. Um, Ian Henderson will join them in the competition. He turns 30 in a few weeks' time. 
Um, six of the 30 plus year olds as well, born in the 1980s. And whereas none of the Irish squad is born in the 2000s. So yeah, France are just going to have a bit more physical stamina because they have younger players. France are ranked fifth right now. And I think the key player is going to be Gael Fiku, the most capped player with 66 tests. Olivon is still out injured, so Dupont will remain as the captain. And look, man, um, Dupont can't do it all himself. He'll be looking for Fiku to really um, help out with defense, organizing the team at set piece, things like that. Fiku's got a very commanding position and uh, voice from 12. Um, the key strength, rather, young players are very experienced, though. Um, eight of the regular starters, this includes um, Cameron Wokey, Demba Bamba, Romain Entomac, Damien Peno. Yeah, they're, they're all so young for regular starters, and they're really accumulating the caps, man. Um, the key weakness, though, um, perhaps an over-reliance on DuPont. Um, no Baptiste Seran in the team. Uh, Quilu, I think that's how you say his name, and Luku, who is 29 years old. Um, those two have a combined total of 10 caps, so... I'm hoping this whole captaincy and World Player of the Year all coming together don't impact DuPont's ability to reach his potential. Because of um, the weaknesses I've outlined, I don't think there will be a Grand Slam. I do think Ireland will beat France, but I think Ireland will have multiple victories. So, sorry, multiple defeats. So, um, this Six Nations, I think, is quite wide open. My predictions could end up being very wrong because the Six Nations is such a good competition. You just don't ever know who is going to win. Goodness me. So yes, guys, that's the end of the video. Please make sure to visit the Black Jersey's Instagram page. Over 13,000 followers. Um, I've also got a Discord server for the Black Jersey. And of course, if you're ever keen to make a donation, um, I've got a PayPal button, a subscribe star, and a Patreon where my patrons support me. Thank you so much for watching the video. The Six Nations is less than a week away now. So fingers crossed it's going to be a good competition. Thank you for coming to view the video, guys. And I'll see you later.